After a month and a half stay in Pakistan, I am leaving the country towards India. In order to get this done, I have to descend from the mountains and cross through the entire country. This is because I am not allowed to cross the line of control, despite Karjavi's very close, approx. A couple of hours drive. The only official border crossing that international travelers like me can use is the Wagga border crossing almost a thousand kilometers to the south. I am now at Skardu bus station and I have to go back to Gilgit first to get to the interior of the country. My situation is not made easier by the fact that the road between Skardu and Gilgit is under construction. This results in a significant delay due to traffic jam. We are waiting for an hour, and it is still uncertain when we can leave. Distance between cities Laha, Punjab, Pakistan and Skardu, Pakistan on public roads is 955.49 kilometers or 592.40 miles. Hopefully we are leaving now. Yeah, are ready to go? Yes. Yeah, yeah. And indeed. However, we will take a break of half an hour at this place before continuing towards Gujit. According to general rule of thumb, every four hours every driver takes a half hour break, usually near a restaurant. Soon I will say goodbye to the mountains, and they will no longer dominate the landscape. I will not see mountains again until reaching Kashmir in India. The characteristic feature of the mountains is that they can cover the sun for a long time, covering the valley in shadow. However, once it reappears, it shines brightly. Many Muslim countries still have gender segregation. Here in Pakistan, this is not to the same extent as in Iran or Afghanistan, but this phenomenon exists unlike in secularized Turkey or the post-Soviet Central Asian republics. Here, for example, separate dining areas are reserved for men and women, separating well from each other. Now I take the opportunity to go for a walk, which I won't have the chance to do for several hours, and I walk around the area. Drives like this in this part of the world are extremely uncomfortable, and taxing both physically and mentally. I don't have any special video recording equipment, I'm traveling around the world with a simple pocket camera for two decades. Therefore, sometimes, especially when taking video records while hiking, it is difficult to keep it stable. No matter how I strive for doing this, it unavoidably gets shaky. Yet, the best shots come out of these, because they most effectively convey what surrounds you. It's the atmosphere of the place that makes me want to relive those experiences while editing. As I cross Pakistan, where I haven't been since 2007, I think about giving back as much as possible through my documentaries about this extremely diverse and fascinating country. In addition to presenting the cultural, geographical, folk and religious traditions, geopolitical and historical background, I don't forget the small details either. Within a few hours, I reached Gilgit, where the minibus dropped me off in the city center. From here, the bus station is barely a quarter of an hour away with the local means of transport, a directional or shared van. Meanwhile, the van drives along the city's main road. This is a special way of sightseeing. This means of transport does not have a designated stop. You have to knock and it stops. But it is recommended to have a small amount of cash to pay, they cannot exchange 500 rupees. Gilgit is the transportation hub of the northern part of the country. There are two main directions from here, to Kashgar in Xinjiang and to the capital, Islamabad. There are buses from here to Islamabad twice a day, in the early afternoon and in the evening. I'm taking the night bus. I decided to make a short detour to Peshawar before continuing to Lahore and the Indian border. The subcontinent's hot climate is already hitting me here. It is already the middle of November, and the temperature has not yet dropped below 30 degrees Celsius. This sudden heat particularly shocks me, because I have been adapting to the cool mountain climate for more than a month. 
What you should know about Peshawar is that it is close to the Khyber Pass, the border with Afghanistan, and was the gateway to India for centuries. Because of its physical proximity, it is relatively easy to get into Afghanistan from here, but I decided that it would be a different trip. Both sides of the border are inhabited by Pashtuns, and they are divided by the Durand Line, which marks the border between Afghanistan and Pakistan. A diverse, proud, warrior people with origins lost in legend, today they constitute one of the world's largest tribal groups. They also inhabit the tribal areas between the two countries, which legally belong to Pakistan, but the Pakistani authorities have no control over them. These tribes do not recognize the border, they are living according to their own laws. The road through the tribal agencies was considered too risky for foreigners, but since the Taliban takeover in last August, everything is seen to be calming down. So much so, that foreigners are officially allowed to travel to Afghanistan through the Khyber Pass once again. Peshawar is also a great starting point for trips to the Swat Valley and Chitral. However, my journey this time leads to India. After a day I arrived in the old Mulls capital, Laha. I booked a hotel room not far from the Faisal Movers bus terminal. This location is at the edge of the metropolis, but far from the city business center and the main attractions. With a rickshaw, you can get into the center from 200 to 400 rupees in a quarter of an hour, depending on the bargain. It is very important for all those traveling to Pakistan, that only bank alfalas and standard chartered ATMs accept international transactions. No any other ATM does. I tried many other ATMs, but they all rejected both my Visa and MasterCards without ex exception. At least at the time of writing. I have two full days in both Lahore and Pakistan before I leave the country for India. However, I am not planning any sightseeing during this time. At least in Laha. Today is for rest. As for tomorrow, I'm gonna watch the famous flag lowering ceremony at Wagga. I had the opportunity to see this event 15 years ago, in 2007, from both sides of the border. Of course, it was a completely different world. This country was still a military dictatorship, and today, even if it is vulnerable, it is already a multi-party democracy. Of course, Pakistan still has a lot of problems today. The country is struggling with hyperinflation and a series of domestic political crises. In addition, society is burdened with social problems, and the country is not sped by natural disasters, including earthquakes and summer floods, which hit the southern part of the country the most. There are things that don't change. Now we enjoy the atmosphere in the evening bustle of the big city. Like any third world metropolis, Lahore is chaotic and shocking at first, but you can learn to enjoy its rhythm. I woke up early today to catch a rickshaw to take me to the Wagga International Border Crossing, 30 kilometers to the east. I'm not crossing the border now, I'm crossing the border tomorrow. And the border closing ceremony does not start until late in the afternoon. This means that they will not let you through the checkpoint until the border now. Unless you intend to cross, of course. There is a simple reason for, in spite of this, why I go to the border. I would like to model how smooth tomorrow's border crossing will be along with the journey there. Besides, I don't feel like spending today in the hustle and bustle of the metropolis or in my hotel room. Whether or not you're going to India, it's worth making a special trip to the border to watch the amazing closing of the border ceremony that takes place every day. If you've got time, see it from both sides of the fence as I did and shall do tonight. In case you are crossing the border, you'll only get to see it from the Indian side. Either way, I'll show you from both sides in the next part, as I have seen.
It happened as I predicted, I have to wait until late afternoon outside of the border zone. They asked for my passport, which I said I had left at the hotel. But I showed them its photocopy. Unfortunately, I could not film the border crossing itself for obvious reasons. See you in India. Thank you for being here, if you like this video, please hit the like button and consider to subscribe, and one more th thing. If you are here, you might be interested in philosophy with good chance. In this case, please do not forget to visit my second YouTube channel, The Stoic Spirit. Thanks for watching.